Hello boys and girls, so I hope you're all enjoying the lovely weather we've been having this week. It's been a bit more sunny. Um, today Harry's going to share a Bible story and Alexandra's going to share a memory verse. But before they do, we're going to pray first. So and let's just bow our heads and pray. Um, dear God, thank you for this week and the lovely weather you've blessed us with. Thank you for um, being able to go outside and enjoy the sun and thank you that the days are getting longer and um, I pray Lord that you would help us all to listen to the story and Bible verse and that we'll learn something new this morning in Jesus name amen okay boys and girls so first I think Harry's going to share the Bible story and then Alexandra's going to share the memory verse so Hope you all enjoy. Hello boys and girls, I hope you're keeping well. Uh, today in SML we're going to be looking at someone called Lottie Moon. Now Lottie Moon's full name is actually Charlotte and she lived all the way over in America over 150 years ago. And she was someone who went across the world to serve God. So today in SML we're going to be looking um at the early stages of her life and later on in the next couple of SMLs we're going to be looking at what she did later on. So when she was 14 years old Lottie attended a school called the Hollands Institute. Now this was a strict boarding school so she lived there and she studied there. And at this time she wasn't thinking much about her future uh, and one day when she was in a room she was laughing to herself as she stripped her bed rolled the streets and tucked them under her arm. Her roommate Carrie Ann was sound asleep and never moved as Lottie felt her way out of the dark room. Only a bit of sunlight was showing in the sky. Now Lottie Moon was tiny, only four feet three inches tall, but she knew how to think big. Today was April Fool's Day and she was planning one of her tricks that would amaze the entire school. Lottie, Lottie had been at Holland's Institute for Girls ever since her father died. She didn't have a moment's freedom there. A bell rang for meals. It rang for classes. It rang twice a day for the chapel services, which Lottie didn't like at all. The first bell rang at six o'clock in the morning. Well, not today, Lottie thought. She lifted a key from a nail by the attic door and unlocked it. She saw the ladder to the rafters and above it another ladder to the tower where the huge bell hung. Once up to two flights, Lottie tied her sheets around the clapper of the bell, anchoring it to the rope. She backed down the ladders and returned to her room. Lottie giggled and waited for six o'clock. No bell! The hands of her table clock crawled to seven o'clock before the bell finally changed. We're all an hour late, she said happily to carry on. Girls rushed to breakfast and found kitchen workers confused. They were just beginning to set the tables. The food wasn't hot. Classes were all mixed up. Chapel was cancelled. Lottie returned to her room to change her clothes for a late dinner that evening. Carrie was waiting for her. The principal knew it was you, she said. Everyone thought of you first thing, and you're the only one without sheets in your bed. It was worth it to get out of the chapel meeting, Lottie replied. I'm bored with church and not the least bit interested in being a Christian. Now does that sound like God had begun to do a good work in Lottie? We'll have to see. After Lottie graduated from Holland's Institute, she spent some time at her home near Charlottesville, Virginia, which is in uh, the south of uh, the United States of America. And in September, she went on to another girls' school to get more education. She loved to read and study. Her grades were great. She already knew four foreign languages. One day at dinner, a new girl asked, What's your name? Lottie D. Moon, she said. What's the D stand for? Devil, Lottie snapped, because I'm not a bit religious and I don't expect to see me in church, for I have better things to do. She never did tell her real name, her, her real middle name. It's sad, 
because at this time Lottie was still not willing to let God begin a good work in her. Lottie continued to play practical jokes at her new school. She made fun of the pastor of the church across the road. One Sunday Lottie did go to church though, but only to listen for something in the sermon to make fun of. But she was surprised to find it was an interesting talk full of scripture and it made sense. All that night a barking dog kept her awake and she thought about the things she had heard. Lottie was a southern young lady, wealthy and educated. Did she need God? Must she admit she was a sinner in need of forgiveness? Suddenly she wanted to do just that. The next morning Lottie got up early for a prayer meeting. Some of the students attended at sunrise. She didn't know it but they were praying for her. Oh, gasped one girl when she arrived. Why, here's Lottie Moon in person. We were praying for you, Lottie, but we never dreamed you'd walk right in. For once, Lottie didn't give back a smart remark. She sat quietly and listened. Then she returned for the evening service. When the pastor invited people to receive Christ, Lottie went forward and knelt at the altar. As she prayed, she admitted she had sinned, that she had done wrong things that didn't please God. Like you and me, Lottie was born a sinner. The Bible says, all have sinned in Romans 3, 23. Our sins separate us from God, who is perfectly good. Lottie was not fit for her God's perfect home called heaven. Though Lottie Moon was a sinner, God still loved her. He had made her and given her that fun-loving, daring, one-of-a-kind personality. God made you too. He knows everything about you and loves you very much. God sent his one and only son, Jesus, from heaven to earth for Lottie and everyone on earth. Jesus lived a perfect life. He willingly took the punishment for our sin by dying on a cross. Three days after Jesus died, God raised him from the dead. Perhaps the pastor read these words from the Bible that day. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that's from 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3b. Now Lottie believed these words, so she asked Jesus to be her saver and God forgave her. She was a brand new person inside. After Lottie received Christ as her saviour, God began to work in her heart and changed her in many ways. Lottie still had a bold personality and she was still one of the smartest, best educated young ladies in the south of the United States. But she no longer lived for herself. She didn't play practical jokes. Her voice became gentle and she was kind to others. She wondered, wondered what God had planned for her life. Little did she know what big plans God had in mind for her. And we'll find out more about those next week. God has plans for me and you too though. Before you can find out what they are, you must receive Jesus as your saviour. If you understand you are a sinner, but you never ask Jesus to save you from your sins, you can do that today. Listen to God's promise. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that's Jesus, that whoever believes in him, that includes you, shall not perish, perish, that means being separated from God, but have eternal life. And that's a new life on earth and in heaven. But that's all of the story for today, boys and girls. Um, now um, we're going to do the memory verse. Um, so pay attention to that and I hope you enjoy it. Goodbye. Hello boys and girls and welcome to today's memory verse. Today we're going to be learning about what Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 tells us. What do you call someone who starts a job and doesn't finish it? A quitter. Sometimes people give up when a job gets too hard, but there is someone that you can always count on to finish his work every single time. That someone is God. God's word, the Bible, says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you 
will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God begins a good work in your heart as soon as you receive, receive Jesus as your saviour from sin. God begins to change the way that you think, talk and behave when you become his child. As you spend time reading God's word and learning about Jesus, God's Holy Spirit helps you become more like Jesus. God promises that he will finish the work he started in you. He will carry it on to completion until the day in which Jesus comes back. God never quits or gives up on you. If you have never received Jesus as your saviour, he has not yet begun a good work in you, but he wants to. If you want to receive Jesus as your saviour, all you have to do is say a prayer, asking Jesus into your life and you will be transformed. If you have already received Jesus as your saviour, remember that you are special to God and he is doing a good work in your life. He wants to change you in ways that will help you serve him and help others to know him. The more you let God to change your thoughts, words and behaviour, the more he can use you to serve him and the more you will become like Jesus.